Hey, have you heard any good books lately? This is Talking Audiobooks, your weekly podcast for all news, discussion, and opinions surrounding the wonderful world of audiobooks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, wherever you are, whenever you may be listening. This is the Talking Audiobooks Podcast. I am your host, the man with the face made for radio and the voice made for print, Casey Trowbridge. And as always, I am happy to be with you. For you, the listeners of the Talking Audiobooks Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash talking audiobooks. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash talking audiobooks for your free audiobook. And now back to your host, Casey Trowbridge. Hey everybody, this is your host of the Talking Audiobooks podcast, Casey Trowbridge, and I am here with you for another special bonus episode of the show. This episode is going to feature some of the audiobooks that were written and narrated by the legendary sports writer Frank DeFord, who passed away in May of 2017. Now, you might be wondering why it is that if he passed away in May 2017, why we're waiting until now to produce this retrospective episode featuring his work. And the reason for that is very simple. At around the time he passed away, I hadn't even officially become host of this show yet. My first episode as host of the show aired on June the 2nd, though it was taped before that. But the truth is, we hadn't really figured out the format. We knew that we wanted to do these themed episodes from time to time, but we didn't know what they were going to look like, how often they would come. But when Frank DeFord passed away, I knew instinctively that I wanted to do this type of episode in his memory I am a big sports fan, of course, as you can tell if you listen to this show even once, I would say you probably can figure out that I am a big sports fan. Although I'm not personally familiar with too much of Frank DeFord's work, he's not someone that I necessarily read a lot of, but the magnitude of his accomplishments are so high that I knew the name even without being necessarily all that familiar with the work. He's certainly someone who's had an influence on many people, and some would probably uh, argue very convincingly that he is the most influential sports writer of the second half of the 20th century, at least, if not uh, the most influential sports writer of all time, not just for the work that he produced himself, but for the number of people that he mentored and who grew up admiring his work and trying to emulate his style. So for me, this was a no-brainer type of episode. And so I went through the listings on audible.com to see how many of his books were available. He has written 18 books, nine of which are novels, and there are five of them on audible.com right now. I would not be surprised at all to see more of them end up on Audible in the wake of his passing. Uh, That tends to happen a lot. A lot of authors seem to have their works hit audiobook after they have passed. And if not for that reason, then for the fact that book publishers are looking for content as the audiobook industry continues to grow. So I would say that more than likely you're going to see more of Frank DeFord's work hit audiobook in the coming months and years. 
So we won't be focusing on all 18 of his books or all nine of his novels. We'll just be focusing on what's available right now that you can find on audible.com. And I think it's safe to say if it's not on Audible, it's probably not out on audio at all. Or if it is, it's uh, very hard to find and it's probably on a CD or something or tapes that, you know, are very old. But we're going to delve deeper into his work here in just a second. I'm going to play some excerpts and uh, talk about different aspects of his work in between those excerpts. We'll be back with more of the Talking Audiobooks podcast right after this. We have a winner. Sarah Rutgers from Minnesota won the Talking Audiobooks podcast drawing for four free audiobooks from audible.com. Congratulations, Sarah. The September Talking Audiobooks podcast giveaway is on. And now we've added a way for you to increase your chance to win. Just go to the website, talkingaudiobooks.com. On the right side, click on September Giveaway, and you can enter to win four free audiobooks from audible.com. But wait, there's more. Now you can add up to seven additional entries to increase your chance of winning. You can earn bonus entries by visiting our website, liking Talking Audiobooks on Facebook, sharing us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, sharing us on Twitter, sharing us on Google. But wait, there's more. Now, new with the September giveaway, you can earn an additional entry for every friend you invite to join the drawing with you. No purchase necessary. All you have to do is enter. Void where prohibited by law, but... Who would want to prohibit you from winning four free audiobooks from Audible? Enter today. Get your friends to enter. Get your entries in by noon on September 28th. A winner will be randomly drawn from everyone who enters. Good luck. Benjamin Franklin DeFord III was born December 16, 1938, and passed away on May 28, 2017, at the age of 78. He is most well known for his work at Sports Illustrated from 1962 up until pretty close to his death in 2017. But you may have also heard him as a commentator on NPR's Morning Edition, uh, a post that he held from 1980 until 2017. He is a member of the National Sportscasters and Sports Writers Association Hall of Fame, and he was named National Sports Writer of the Year six times by that organization throughout his career. In 1989, DeFord was made editor-in-chief of The National, which was the first ever daily sports newspaper in the United States. And what I will say about The National is, while it only lasted for about 18 months, uh, it had a large influence over uh, the sports media industry and introduced a lot of new writers that would become nationally prominent over the years. In fact, the old Grantland website a few years ago did an oral history of the national. I would say that it has become beloved in in its death. Uh, it's one of those things where in 1989, 90, 91, when the National was around, you had a case of something that was very unique and, you know, hadn't really ever been done before. Now, with the Internet and things, an idea like the National in digital space seems almost quaint, but uh, for its time, it definitely made an impact even in its short run. And I would encourage you to check out the Grantland oral history of the national article. You can run it through Google and it'll pop that right up for you. 
after DeFord died, the Sports Illustrated Media podcast hosted by Richard Deitch did an episode where there were several people, about a half a dozen, I would think, that were brought on to discuss Frank DeFord and his legacy and his impact on them and their careers. So he definitely had a lot of influence, and this show is uh, to highlight his work that has come to audiobook, and this is something that we plan to do when uh, we have the sad occasion to do so, looking back at someone's life, if they have a body of work that you can find on an audiobook, there's a good chance that they will be featured on one of these theme shows uh, at some point in the future. So now that I've given a little bit of a background on DeFord and his work, of course, he was also known as an advocate for research and treatment of cystic fibrosis. So it's not all about uh, the sports with him, and he had a number of charitable endeavors that he supported throughout his life. And now that I've gotten uh, some of his background information, we're going to talk about some of the audiobooks that you can get from audible.com that are written and narrated by Frank DeFord. And so we're going to now move on into that first book in our Frank DeFord audiobook retrospective. Our first book is by no means the first book that DeFord wrote, but it is the first one that made it to Audible, and that is a historical fiction novel he wrote called Bliss Remembered. It is narrated by Pam Ward and Traber Burns. It comes to you from Blackstone Audio. It has a running time of 11 hours and 48 minutes, and it was released on April 12, 2011. This novel follows two love stories from the perspective of a Olympic champion named Sydney Stringfellow. She is an athlete at the 1936 Berlin Olympics and begins an affair with a German, and that affair ends when political forces tear them apart. Back in the States, she is vulnerable and trying to heal a broken heart when a striking American begins to pursue her. And this is a book that is set, obviously, around the time when all of the world is in turmoil near the beginning of World War II and, of course, the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. That is uh, Hitler's Olympics and Uh, Of course, the story of Jesse Owens winning medal after medal uh, at the Berlin Olympics is memorable in history. So this is a work of historical fiction from DeFord. This is one of his novels. It is uh, the only book on Audible that he has not narrated himself. So this one is in the hands of Pam Ward and Traber Burns, and it comes to you from Blackstone. And here, right now, is an excerpt of Bliss Remembered on the Frank DeFord Retrospective. Mom and I would watch it every night. She adored Michael Phelps, all the more so that he came from Baltimore, because she had grown up nearby, across Chesapeake Bay, on the eastern shore of Maryland. I wish he'd swim in the backstroke, she said. That had been her specialty. You can't swim everything, Mother. He can. He's amazing. I never asked you. Why did you swim backstroke? You really want to know, Teddy? Yeah. Because when you're on your back, you don't have your face stuck in the water. You can see the sky. I liked that. Who would have thunk it, I said. Now, it's not so good when you're in a race in an outdoor pool. Because if the sun's out, it's in your eyes. But me just swimming the backstroke in the river, why, if the sun got in my eyes, I just turned over for a while. You've got to remember, in the beginning, I just swam for the hell of it, because the river was out our backyard. I imagine if I'd lived in Nepal, I'd have climbed mountains and been a Sherpa. Aren't the Sherpas all men? For God's sake, Teddy, don't be so literal. Is this any better? If I'd grown up in Las Vegas, I'd have been a whore. 
Mom made certain to find out when the women's hundred-meter backstroke would be shown. That had been her event when she'd made the U.S. team. I want to tell you all about that, she told me. You do? I could never get a word out of you on that. Well, there was a reason. What was that? That's what you're going to find out, Ansi Pants. But things were connected. I don't know what that means. It means I didn't ever want to talk about the Olympics because that was connected to other stuff, which I didn't think was any of your damn business. Till now. A woman can change her mind. So can a man, but most of you are too stubborn ever to do that. That reminded me. I thought you had something for me. I do. What is it? Teddy, just hold your horses. She shook her head in despair at me, which was not uncommon, although I usually couldn't imagine what exactly it was that Mom held me in despair of. Nobody can wait anymore, she said in exasperation. One of the great technological advances in this world, which is actually a terrible step backwards, is cameras. At times like this, I had no idea where she was going. How so? I asked. Mom liked a straight man. Much of the fun of taking pictures was not knowing how a picture came out. You took a picture and then had to wait till you got the roll back from the drugstore to find out how good the pictures were. And when you found out one of them, even only one of them, was a honey of a picture, it made your day. Now, with all this digital nonsense, you can see the picture right away. What fun is that? Well, there's something to be said for getting something right, isn't there? Oh, sure, she said in that world-weary way, which I took to really indicate a weariness of me and my questions. But the point is, the larger point, Teddy, is that there are no surprises left. You can tell on the phone who it is before you pick it up. All the children are on that Facebook thing, so there's no blind dates left. Just peekaboo dates. Everybody has to know what sex their child is hardly before they're out of bed and through conceiving. No, no, no. We think we're so clever, but we're a poorer world without surprises. Still shaking her head at the folly of us all, she got up and went over to her little antique desk, opened a drawer, and pulled out one of those large acetate envelopes. It was a bright purple, violet, her favorite color. I instinctively reached out my hand for the folder. You would have thought that I'd have learned by now. No, 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 she said. Not yet. In fact, I've decided that I'm going to tell you the first part of the story. This is a story? I asked, pointing to the envelope. You've written a story? No, no, Teddy, not a story story. It's the real story that happened to me long ago that I want you to know about. To you? My story, yes. At the Olympics? That's part of it. She grinned, and rather mischievously, I thought. That's a lot of the part I'm going to tell you. Why do you want to tell me that part? Well, the first part is a lot of fun, so I decided I'd enjoy telling you that. As she stood before me, she gently wrapped the envelope in her thigh. But the second part is more important, so I better let you read that to make sure it's absolutely clear. All right, I got it. Our next book in our Frank DeFord retrospective is one of his more noteworthy works of fiction. Uh, Sports Illustrated at one time named this one of the top 25 best sports books of all time. This one was released on November 23rd, 2013. It is a production of Audible Studios. It has a running time of 10 hours and 48 minutes and is narrated by the author himself. This is the story of Gavin Gray, an all-American running back at the University of North Carolina in the late 1950s. He's incredibly famous. He's graced the covers of Time and Life magazine, and he's been on the Ed Sullivan Show. Everybody wants a piece of him, including his nephew Donnie, who is the narrator of the story. Gavin has an okay NFL career, but when the accolades no longer matter, the glory is fading away, and his career is winding down, uh, he has trouble making his adjustment 
to a time when he is no longer everybody's All-American and he finds himself in a position where his wife is now the breadwinner of the family. And this is a work of fiction, but how athletes deal with the absence of fame when fame goes away and how you transition from that period of time where everybody wants a piece of you to a time when nobody wants to acknowledge that they even ever knew you is a timely topic in sports, no matter what era you're talking about. This book was produced in 1981. It was released on audiobook to Audible in 2013. And what we're going to do now is play for you a sample of Everybody's All-American, written and read by Frank DeFord here on the Talking Audiobooks Frank DeFord Retrospective Podcast. Even now, looking back, there has never been anything so exciting in my life as the weekend when I was wide-eyed and 14 and visited Gavin Gray at Chapel Hill. I still measure all my other memories by it. In that autumn when he was 21 and in his senior year at the University of North Carolina, it stayed Indian summer right up through the Duke game. Gavin Gray was famous, handsome, and heroic, and in no ways a man or a real person. He stood six foot even and weighed 185 pounds, a body perfectly proportioned and as agile as it was classically formed. He played right halfback and was the fastest man on the Tar Heel team, number 25. We always said, Gavin Gray, number 25 in your program, number one in our hearts. The two previous years, he'd been chosen an All-American. But now it was something else again. Now he was known as everybody's All-American. When anyone referred to him, they always said, Gavin Gray, everybody's All-American, as if the opposition was part of his name. But then the feats he performed between the sideline stripes were incredible. And the whole world, as opposed to merely the sports world, knew of him because he was on the covers of Time and Life and on the Ed Sullivan Show. The latter especially certified him. Even years later, when people would meet Gavin, they would not mention how they saw him play Virginia or Wake Forest or whatever. Instead, they would say, I saw you when you were on Ed Sullivan. They said that as if that appearance was what made him famous. And all I'd done was stand up and wave, Gavin used to protest. He was known far and wide as the Grey Ghost, which immediately conjured up images not only of his elusive ball-carrying abilities, but of the transcendent glories of the Old South as well. In those days, the 1950s, it was still permissible to celebrate the Confederacy. All the teams that played football, each one's marching band played Dixie to specifically salute their team. It was everybody's song and went on all during every game, first one side playing Dixie and everybody jumping up and waving Confederate flags, and then the other side doing the exact same thing. Our next book to be featured is called Big Bill Tilden, The Triumphs and the Tragedy. It was originally written and released in 1975 and is narrated by the author. It was released on Audible on November 23, 2013 as a production of Audible Studios. It has a running time of 8 hours and 47 minutes. This is DeFord's biography of the 1920s era tennis star Big Bill Tilden, who was really America's first big tennis sensation. He is said to have dominated tennis even more than Babe Ruth dominated baseball. He won championship after championship, but his success had a dark side. And this is a look at the dominance of Bill Tilden and his tragic downfall. Here now is an excerpt of Big Bill Tilden, The Triumphs and the Tragedy on the Talking Audiobooks Frank DeFord Retrospective. With any artist who attains the ultimate in his craft, there must be one moment, an instant, when genius is first realized, when a confluence of God's natural gifts at last swirl together with the full powers of 
endeavor and devotion in the man to bear him to greatness. Virtually always, of course, that moment cannot be perceived, and it passes unnoticed. But with Big Bill Tilden, it was isolated, forever frozen in time. He knew precisely when he had arrived, and thoughtfully he revealed it. This happened on Center Court at Wimbledon in 1920. Tilden was already 27, and although he had never won a major championship, he had reached the finals. It was his first trip abroad, and to his delight, the British, unlike his own countrymen, had taken to him right away. Americans always only grudgingly granted Tilden recognition, never mind respect, largely because they were emotionally hung up on Big Bill's main rival, Bill Johnston, who was affectionately known as Little Bill, or even in the soupiest moments, Wee Willie Winky. Johnson was five feet eight, a wonderful cute doll person from the California middle class, and all Americans, Tilden prominently included, were absolutely nuts about him. The little underdog with the big heart who cut larger fellows down to size. If you know me well, you know that baseball is one of my favorite sports. Though it is not my favorite sport to watch, it is most definitely my favorite sport to read about. So this next audiobook holds a particular interest to me because of my love of baseball history. The title is The Old Ball Game, How John McGraw, Christy Mathewson, and the New York Giants Created Modern Baseball. It was produced in 2005, though not released to audiobook until November 5th, 2013, as a production of Audible Studios. It has a running time of 7 hours and 20 minutes and is once again narrated by the author himself. This story tells the tale of baseball's original odd couple, I guess you could say. Christy Mathewson, the pitcher, was clean-cut, college-educated. He was known as the Christian gentleman. He rarely had a harsh word to say about anyone, and that contrasts well with his New York Giants manager, John McGraw, who was known as a ferocious player and for his violent temper. And this story tells the tale of how they came together and brought uh, New York a World Series championship. Christy Mathewson threw three shutouts, three consecutive shutouts in the World Series in only six days. That may be the legit greatest World Series performance of all time. Uh, You could never see anything like that in the modern game of baseball. They would never have a pitcher pitch three times in six days. Twice in six days is about the best you can hope for in the modern game. But uh, this is from an era of baseball I like. I like the early 1900s era a lot. So this book has a lot of appeal for me as a listener. So right now here on our Frank DeFord retrospective is an excerpt of The Old Ball Game. Inasmuch as people at that time were more correct and less impatient than they would be a hundred years later, that summer of 1900 was taken as the last year of an old century rather than as the first of a new one. For purposes of symbolism, this was good, for it wouldn't be until two years later in the genuinely new 20th century that McGraw and Matheson would start to work together in New York, there to have such profound effect upon their sport that they would raise it to a new eminence in the first city of the land and then beyond into Americana. How odd it was, too, how much Matheson and McGraw achieved together, for never were two men in sports so close to one another and yet so far apart in ilk and personality. Well, maybe that was why they were good for baseball, because they offered us both sides of the coin. Matheson was golden, tall and handsome, kind and educated, our beau ideal, the first all-American boy to emerge from the field of play, while McGraw was hard-scrabble, shanty Irish, 
a pugnacious little boss who would become the model for the classic American coach, a male version of the whore with a heart of gold, the tough, flinty so-and-so who was field smart, a man's man his players came to love despite themselves. Every American could want to be Christy Matheson. Every American could admire John J. McGraw. Our final book in our Frank DeFord retrospective here on the Talking Audiobooks podcast is his own autobiography. We have heard him work in fiction as well as his profile of Bill Tilden and the pairing of John McGraw and Christy Matheson on the New York Giants. But now we get to hear Frank DeFord profile Frank DeFord himself. This book was produced in the year 2012, though it was not released to audiobook until November 19th, 2013. If you'll notice, with the exception of Bliss Remembered, all of the books featured in this retrospective hit Audible in the month of November 2013, all from Audible Studios. This one has a running time of 12 hours and 27 minutes and is once again narrated by the author. This is a look at DeFord's life, his childhood, his career as a sports writer, the places he has been, the events he has covered, the people he has known. And it is also a look at the history of the occupation of sports writing itself from the days of the Police Gazette through the careers of Red Smith and Grantland Rice all the way up until the modern day of ESPN. What I know about this book in particular, Overtime, and that's two words, play off of Overtime, the uh, event when sports games such as hockey, basketball, and football in particular go into extra time to resolve a tie. Uh, What I know about this is that there is a story in this book about the time Frank DeFord first met then WWF and now WWE owner Vince McMahon. And it is a tremendous story. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't heard it and didn't kind of have some idea of the type of sense of humor that Vince McMahon has, but let's just say that Frank DeFord was not very impressed with Vince McMahon stealing his shoes. Uh, That is not featured in the excerpt that you are about to hear, but nonetheless, we hope you enjoy this excerpt of Frank DeFord's autobiography, Over Time, My Life as a Sports Writer, here on talking audiobooks. Unfortunately, I had a wonderfully happy childhood of little note. If you are to become a writer, it helps immensely to have suffered a miserable upbringing rife with trauma. Ideally, with a drunken father who beat you and a mother who was a prostitute, albeit a saint when not turning tricks. But just my luck, nothing of the sort. Nor, for that matter, have I ever been placed in any real jeopardy, found myself in a perfect storm, or even been afforded the opportunity to display heroics, all the personal experiences that writers thrive on. The one and only time I was actually in anything approximating proximity to anything remotely dangerous was at the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta when some nut blew up a bomb in Centennial Park, which was right outside my hotel room. As it happened, though, loud bands had been playing nightly in the park. I had complained about this at the bar one evening, and Edwin Pope of the Miami Herald had given me an extra set of spectacular earplugs that molded to the ear. So I inserted them and... That very night, the bomb exploded and sirens wailed and entire battalions of law enforcement troops marched about right outside my window. But I heard not a peep. 
We often speak of people who are larger than the sum of their parts. I imagine I'm the other way around, that the sum of my parts is larger than me. We hope you have enjoyed the Talking Audiobooks podcast, Frank DeFord Retrospective. We will be bringing you more themed episodes like this one well into the future. We hope you've enjoyed this one as well as our July 4th themed episode. Uh, And if you have any ideas for potential themes you'd like us to discuss on the show, you can email us at feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com with your suggestion. And if we use it, we will send you a free code so that you can get your own Audible audiobook. If you're not a member of audible.com already, or if you haven't been a member in quite a while, you can get a free 30-day free trial of audible.com and experience all the member benefits. And all you have to do is go to audibletrial.com slash talking audiobooks and you can sign up for a free 30-day free trial of Audible. You will receive a credit, good for one free book, and you can pick anything from their catalog of over 180,000 titles. With that many titles, you should have no problem finding something that you want to listen to. It might be one of the books that you've heard here, written and narrated by Frank DeFord, or it might be something else entirely. It's entirely up to you. You can use your credit on whatever you would like. And if you use audibletrial.com slash talking audiobooks to sign up for your free 30-day free trial of audible.com, you will be helping this podcast immensely. I want to encourage you to check us out on Facebook. We have a page, facebook.com slash talking audiobooks. When a new episode of the show drops, you will see a link to that on our page, and that will appear in your news feed if you like the page and if you follow the page. We also have our own discussion group on Facebook now. It is facebook.com slash groups slash talking audiobooks. You can join us and you can leave your feedback on today's episode looking at the audiobooks of Frank Ford. You can comment on any of our past episodes as well as any episode that we do in the future. You can start your own discussion topic on the board. You can promo your own work if you're an author or a narrator and you have some review copies that you'd like to get circulated. You can certainly do that in our group. If you're a blogger and you have written reviews and you'd like our audience to check those out, feel free to post those as topics as well. It is a pretty free and open discussion group for all things related to the podcast and the world of audiobooks. So I would encourage you to check that out as well. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow the show account at Talking Audio. That's all one word, Talking Audio. And I am Audiobook Casey. Again, all one word, Audiobook C-A-S-E-Y is how you find me on Twitter. Talk about the show, talk about things coming up on the show. And we have news of sales and other things that we post to social media. So would definitely encourage you to check us out on Twitter. I can also be found on Goodreads. If you want to know when I start listening to one of the books featured on today's podcast, the easiest way to know that is to become one of my friends on Goodreads. And I accept friend requests from anybody who sends them out. I'm always happy to connect with fellow book lovers, fellow audiobook lovers, especially. And again, my Goodreads user ID is Audiobook KC. So go to goodreads.com slash audiobook KC, C-A-S-E-Y, and you can friend me there and I would be happy to connect with you. That is going to end our special look at the audiobooks of Frank DeFord here on the Talking Audiobooks podcast. We hope you tune in to our next regular weekly episode of the show, as well as any bonus shows that we do in the future. So until next time, 
I am Casey Trowbridge, the host of the Talking Audiobooks podcast. And as I do at the end of every episode, I am going to encourage you to keep listening. The September Talking Audiobooks podcast giveaway is on. And now we've added a way for you to increase your chance to win. Just go to the website, talkingaudiobooks.com. On the right side, click on September Giveaway, and you can enter to win four free audiobooks from audible.com. But wait, there's more. Now you can add up to seven additional entries to increase your chance of winning. You can earn bonus entries by visiting our website, liking Talking Audiobooks on Facebook, sharing us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, sharing us on Twitter, sharing us on Google. But wait, there's more. Now, new with the September giveaway, you can earn an additional entry for every friend you invite to join the drawing with you. No purchase necessary. All you have to do is enter. Void where prohibited by law, but who would want to prohibit you from winning four free audiobooks from Audible? Enter today. Get your friends to enter. Get your entries in by noon on September 28th. A winner will be randomly drawn from everyone who enters. Good luck. Talking Audiobooks is a trademark of KenJoy Media, produced by KenJoy Media, copyright 2017, all rights reserved. Your host has been Casey Trowbridge, produced by Ken Joy. Theme music composed by Christian Anderson, licensed through EpidemicMusic.com. Visit our website at TalkingAudiobooks.com. Follow us on Twitter at Talking Audio. Follow us on Facebook at Talking Audiobooks. And subscribe to the Talking Audiobooks YouTube channel. Here's a disclaimer. Various sponsors, like Audible.com, help make this podcast possible. However, they are not responsible for its content. They don't dictate what we talk about or what books we share with you. And therefore, the opinions that you hear on here are unfortunately those of the host and our guests. We'd love to hear from you, so email us at feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. Tell us what audiobooks you're listening to, what you've liked in the past, narrators that you like. Ask us questions, anything. It's for your feedback. Feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. That's it. See you next time on Talking Audiobooks.